here is an implementation of the iStaff registry service that you've uh, previously seen me create for the use case of uh, sending notification emails uh, to uh, shop managers. Now, this is the implementation of the interface. Essentially, I look up all the user IDs of uh, users that have a claim of uh, admin claim type and manager claim type, right? So admins and uh, uh, managers are, admins are basically also considered managers, right? And then I check if the user IDs, uh, you know, if uh, the user tables contains this, then we're gonna return this. Now, this is part of the, my integration testing and uh, uh, let me just quickly take you over the setup that I got here. And uh, uh, yeah, so uh, what we got here is we got a web application factory that points at the startup of my shop. Specifically, what I'm doing is I'm removing the two DB context options that I have here, right? Uh, for the shop DB context and platform DB context. Platform DB context is more wider, uh, like uh, persistent security keys and uh, users and stuff like that, right? So something that's going to be valid uh, across all my sites. Then uh, for each one of these services, if I need to remove any other services, I add something here and that also gets removed. I then basically have a connection string uh, to a, uh, a database, right? So uh, a database, you can see that I'm amending the name here with a session ID. The session ID is just a GUID. Right, so I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna end up with a database that has a good in its name, and I'm setting that connection string on the AppDB context. Right. Uh, furthermore, I just go ahead and uh, you know uh, I, I ensure I create the shop DB context and then I apply the migrations for any, any any other DB context that I have. Right. So I get a live representation of my platform. Uh, this uh, will, this of course requires me to have a, um, uh, what's it called, uh, oh, user running here. So let's go into PSQL here and here we're going to list, list these tables. So here's one of those tables which uh, obviously, not tables but database rather and uh, you got to, you know, you gotta, you gotta do some of this, uh, and then if you if you list it again, you know, you, there you go, right? It's, it's deleted. The point is, every time I start the test, I spin up a database that I'm trying to share across all my tests. How do I share a database connection across all my tests, right? So I have something I have that's called a Postgres collection. Okay, so it's an I collection fixture with a collection definition of Postgres collection, okay? And if you've ever seen an I class fixture, this is specifically scoped to a class. A collection fixture is scoped specifically to anything under that, that collection. I could theoretically separate these databases and have what one individual. I can have a database per test. Well, uh, I'm not that, uh, you know, not that, I don't need that requirement yet. So I have one database for all my tests. I just have to watch out on how I write my tests. What do I need to do? I gotta go above my staff registry and I gotta specify a collection. Name of Postgres collection, right? Postgres collection is this collection defined here, which has an I collection fixture of shop app, app, app factory. So this app factory essentially uh, is available to me anywhere within my application, right? So hopefully that makes sense. Now what I can do is I can go into the constructor and I can go ahead and inject my shop app app factory. App 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 factory. App factory. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know what that weird group is. Create ourselves a fact where we're gonna do a public. Usually these ones are gonna have to be async. Uh, gets admin and manager emails. So right here, what you do is you go to factory and you go to your services, you create scope. Let's go ahead and create a using scope right here, All right? So the resource is going to be this scope. So this is kind of like uh, seeding your database in program CS. I mean, we're doing the exact same thing. So uh, uh, let's go ahead and uh, get the service provider and get required service. We'll get a user manager. And this is going to be for me platform user. 
let's uh, collapse this to the side a little bit. We don't need to look at that right now because I mean, this is pretty self-explanatory. We get a service kind of like dependency injection, but like dependency and extraction. Okay. Once we have the user manager can't type, go ahead and uh, not add, but maybe let's say create a sync. We're going to wait and we're going to say new platform user. Okay. And for this platform user, let's go ahead and uh, we'll create a manager first. Okay. We're going to say username manager and email manager at test.com. Okay. We're going to do the same for an admin. And we will do admin, admin. Cool. So let's go ahead and create our admin and we'll create our manager. Once we have done that, we can then go ahead and proceed to taking the user manager and add claim async, right? And for claim async, what do you do? You specify a manager and then you specify a claim. So for me, I have a platform constants. I go into shop. Oh shop constants and here I have manager claim which I can do just like that okay both of these will need to be awaited and if you are wondering what what's a manager claim is and it's just a claim object with uh, my defined like uh, types and uh, values for uh, manager and admin right so add claim uh, let's go ahead and then add a claim uh, not not in shop uh, it's going to be admin claim just like that right because an admin is platform wide admin rather than just specifically shop admin so here we are this is where the arrange the seed happens okay uh, this is then uh, can get copied right over here and uh, we can again in a different scope get ourselves a different service like the i staff registry staff registry well in our staff registry we get shop manager emails let's go ahead and wait on this we'll say for emails and uh, for me specifically maybe we will want to do something like this right just to be sure let's say we'll create a two second one one, two, right? So we create a couple of managers, uh, an admin. I think that's a okay test. Uh, what I'm then going to do is I'm going to assert that equals three. I'm expecting three in my uh, count. Okay, right here. And then we can expect it to contain specific things, right? So contains, let's grab manager one, emails, right there. Manager two oh. and admin. Okay, if it contains those, th those three emails, eh, we're good. Obviously, it gives me a little indication that that could potentially be null. Hopefully, or what is it saying? Possible enumerations. So, I mean, to get it's not a, too much of a scary error, but in this case, you still want it because sometimes you do have unexpected enumerations and that can actually be dangerous so that you know that's actually valid so uh, let's go ahead and run this test so no service for type uh, identity user manager has been registered here uh, the problem that i'm facing here is that the shop isn't able to authenticate or anything like that because the identity application over here is the one that's managing everything. So here in the startup is where identity and the rest of the, you know, the fellas, fellas get added. So th this is basically the thing that manages everything. So I'm just going to go ahead, copy this configuration that we have here. We can go ahead, close this off, come back to where we had our shop app, app factory. And what I can do, I can either set this up to have access. Or what I can do is I, ha I can set up this specific test to have access. How can I go about this? Uh, let's go ahead and uh, do something along the lines of this. We'll say factory. 
or maybe yeah let's do let's better do this in a constructor uh, just remember that I've copied the thing over so here we can go ahead and save with web host builder oh and that's an extension function with web host builder we'll say builder here right and uh, we can just grab this builder not too much is going to be going on here in our builder we're gonna say configure services so here we can say services services and now we're on the same sort of a playing field here so we can just move this require unique emails that's true the last bit would be this function just returns a web application a host application factory just you know, fine or maybe uh, you know let's try convert it back right because that's what it is uh so yeah at this point all i'm doing is i'm just registering a couple of services with the platform db contact i mean pretty much it uh let's go ahead and rerun the failing test okay so here we're we're unable to cast the type so uh that's fine i'm just gonna have to you know return something along the lines of this put this here say startup uh, the web application factory I'm, I'm appreciating this can sometimes be like small windows and stuff like that but uh there we go right so uh again i'm saying there we go like uh, for like every single time but uh, you know sometimes you get errors sometimes you get a work around them okay and here is where and you're gonna face a bit of a problem so, like you gotta get a schema I mean, uh, getting around this issue is uh, could be pretty painful. So let's go ahead and see what we can do. We're going to go into add identity here. And, you know, we can uh, follow through a little bit and, you know, keep going down until we see the iUser manager uh, being added here. Uh, another thing that is possible, well, preferably what you want to do is you want to go into the user manager and uh, you want to inspect the constructor here and you kind of want to get an idea of... Uh, what services are going to get injected here okay so once you got that you can like kind of set it aside here and uh, instead of adding all of this authentication here uh, really what you want you want just uh, the services for the user manager to function you can go through them one by one i'm not going to stress too much about it so let's go ahead and replace all of this uh, like so all right place this here I have a feeling I'm gonna need a, a couple of types here so T user everything for T user can be replaced with platform user for me so let's go ahead and just do this T role can be replaced with identity role so let's select this delete these pesky comments let's go ahead and uh, remove the rest here close off the user manager hopefully we're not gonna need it anymore uh, let's run this test again so here we're missing an i user store so that's basically means we don't we don't have our entity framework stores added or linked uh, that means well let's just come back to these identity where we were copying our services and uh, let's just grab this identity builder because it's an extension function i just can't uh, be bothered finding the extension function here let's just place our stuff here and here we'll add entity framework stores nice right uh, here we'll have our platform DB context, just like that. And that internally should consume this builder services. Yep, have all the same services. And go ahead and register some of our stores. Yeah, this looks very complicated. So this better work now. Otherwise, uh, I mean, you know, it's gonna it's gonna be a painful journey. Okay, it looks like a different error some foreign key violation i am just going to double check here and uh, i'm just gonna say we might be missing passwords because we're just creating users so let's just give them just give them some good passwords these guys you know let's just do this real quick uh, i'm pretty sure that could be like uh, something missing here uh, because this is this can't find the user or whatever so these might be invalid results or something if this fails now we're, we're just gonna go in a little bit deeper and inspect this okay so there we are okay let's go ahead and put a breakpoint here and we're gonna go ahead and de debug let's bring this down and wait for the results to pop up 
Okay, I was hoping I was going to uh, save the errors there for me. But yeah, you can see as soon as it tries to add here, it's uh, throwing an exception, which is fine. Uh, one thing not to forget is uh, if you stop the, basically, if you st manually stop it, uh, the disposal and the shutdown or deletion of the database doesn't work. So you always want to watch out for that. So well, let's just get an admin creation result. I don't know how many people enjoy this debugging process, kind of like uh, how to do this, um, you know, um, measure one result. Let me, let me finish typing here, measure two. Uh, tell me in the comments, do you like to see me go through the debugging process? Kind of like this one by one uh, error resolution or something like that. All right, so here we are. Yeah, password failed requires non-alpha numeric. Uh, obviously, uh, well, ob not obviously because it took us so long to get here. Essentially, because I'm not overriding the ad identity, not uh, the the options. I uh, require some funky stuff in my uh, password. So let's just do something along the lines of this. And put this here, right? Uh, let the test run, and now we can go ahead and run it again. Okay. Hopefully, ah, uh, still the claim cast. Okay, I still managed to mess it up. All right, we're, we're just gonna debug this until there are no more errors anymore, okay? Okay, so for manager two results, duplicate username. As it happens, go ahead and debug this again. Hopefully, we reached it, everything seems to be successful. Uh, yeah, these are no longer throwing exceptions, which is very nice to remove the breakpoint, skip through it, and success, okay? So uh, as paranoid as I am, let's go ahead and uh, debug this and actually see that the assertions themselves works and uh, that, you know, this in, uh, this collection actually contains the things I need, all right? Otherwise, you know, you got to check that your tests are testing correctly, right? If you don't perform these manual checks, can you really sleep at night? And, you know, really, we do. If we, if we are going to have these users with... Uh, the following claims in um, in the database, it's gonna do it, right? I feel pretty confident. And in case you want, I mean, I don't have too many tests here. These are all integration tests. Uh, we can go ahead and uh, remove this and uh, I'll let you see how long it takes to run all of it. Uh, not too long. Uh, generally, it is uh, the boot time. That is the original, like this is just like one second. This here, you see when it starts spinning, that's like the sky, that's when it creates the database and stuff. But then once the setup is done, just blast through it, right? So it doesn't take too long to test these either. But yeah, uh, hopefully you've enjoyed this little adventure of how to mock up your services. Uh, sometimes you're just going to encounter things like can't add this because, you know, when they register these services, they stand up like 10 thousand other services and at that point you know you gotta like pick and choose on what you're getting uh, and uh, just as a future note this is probably going to be like an extension function so wherever i need this service to seed users or anything like that i'm gonna extend it like this and use it within my application all right so hopefully this helps